Good afternoon. We'll just give folks a moment to clear the waiting room. As you are entering from the waiting room, uh, please do uh, remain on mute unless or until you are testifying before the board. Good afternoon. This is an administrative hearing before the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing. Today is Thursday, September 15th, 2022. This hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. We are joined today by the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing, Kathleen Joyce, and Director of Operations, Rebecca Fu. I will read today's agenda into the record. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee and who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, after which I will swear in all parties. The police report will then be read into the record, followed by a statement by the licensee and questions from the executive director. On this afternoon's hearing, uh, we have one licensee that is Puente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Villares Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. Um, there are four incidents in front of us today. Executive Director Joyce, would you like to take all four together or one can each uh, concurrently or sequentially? Um, why don't we start with um, the July 27th citation 043329. Okay, we'll begin with the uh, incident which occurred on July 27th, 2022, disc jockey taking place without an entertainment license. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, I am. Dr. Hernandez, thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of this incident who wish to testify this afternoon? Place where I can participate. Uh, if you have firsthand personal knowledge of the incident which occurred on July 27th, 2022, then yes, we will allow you to testify. Thank you. Okay, could you please state your name? My name is Saga Krantz. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify on this matter? Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you, uh, Ms. Krantz, if you are going to testify, then I would need you to swear you in as well. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Detective Hernandez, you may please proceed with the police report. Good afternoon. I'll be reading from a police report, which I wrote on Wednesday, July 27, 2022, starring Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD license premise unit conducted a license premise inspection of Bilatis, Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. While reviewing the restaurant's licenses and permits, detectives noticed that the premise had not updated the description of premise from Billiard Hall to nightclub. Detectives also observed, observed that there was a disc jockey providing music. Detectives noticed that the entertainment license did not provide for this type of entertainment. Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Ms. Maria Quintana. Um, as a result of what detectives observed, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection order 043329 for failure to notify the licensing board of premise change and for, for premise providing DJ music without being authorized in the city of Boston entertainment license. Ms. Quintana signed for and accepted the notice. And we did provide some pictures um, from that evening. They were attached, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Branias, uh, would you like to address the incident of July 27th? Well, I spoke to the, the manager that day, which was Maddie, and she stated that she, they, they, we had applied for the license, but she thought just with the application that we had submitted to the to the captain, that 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 would be like uh, enough because I was on vacation, so she didn't know, and that's why we didn't have it hanging up. Because what we usually do is we do it every month, we get our permits, so that's why we didn't have it. I was away. I was away from July twenty seventh to um, August um, until September first. So I think that's most of those problems that were happening was because I wasn't here, but. And I know I, I, I got to take more responsibilities for things like that when I leave, so. 
Thank you. Um, Ms. Krantz, before I move to questions from the executive director, was there a testimony you wanted to add uh, regarding the uh, incident of July 27th? So the music, I live in a neighborhood. I'm a mother of two children and we cannot handle this anymore. I am in a verge of medical health issues because of this, because it's an ongoing and this goes for all the incidents that are quoted today as well. We get an average of three hours of sleep. My kids are afraid of the noise. Um, same thing happened last night. Your music was so loud. Where, that the where whole do you building live? Woke up. Where do you live? I'll ask the questions. Thank oh, you. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Um, I walked into the office this morning yeah. and there was a voicemail yeah. from this woman saying, crying, saying that the music was again loud, so so loud tonight that we recommended she join the hearing. Okay. Ma'am, do you have any more you'd like to add at this point? Ms. Grants, was there anything else you wanted to add on, on this violation or? Just that it's an ongoing problem and it's it's really causing some health issues, family issues, um, disturbing the boys that are going to the local school over here. And this, you know, I feel helpless calling 911, calling the local police. Um, this is obviously not an emergency that is causing immediate attention, but you know, for most of the nights, you know, for the last two weeks, I don't even know if the police can make it there anymore. This, this has to stop. If, if there is a license for something like this, there has to be soundproofing. And my the gates are closed. I can't go look behind the building, but I've seen it during the daytime. There are doors and I believe the doors are open. And if they're not open, the music simply carries through all the way to our building. Thank you, Ms. Krantz. Um, I got to say about that. Excuse me, Mr. Brenius. I got I got I got to respond to that if I can. Okay. What the cry to the noise last night? Not last night. I mean, last night it was it was it wasn't even noise last night because it wasn't even busy last night. If I show you the cells from last night, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump back in. I'm going to jump back in and talk about July 27th, the day before you left for for about six weeks. Nay, nay, you're the manager of record, right? I am. Do you understand what that means? Yes. Do you understand what your responsibilities are? Yes, Miss. Do you understand the rules and regulations that come along yes, with that? I do. So do you understand that if you don't have a license to have a DJ, that you're not allowed to have a DJ? I do. Do you understand that means whoever's in charge is also not allowed to have a DJ? Yes, I do. So what happened here? Did you not tell them? Was it a, we, give, give me give me a, an explanation as to why you left town I, and you left someone in charge that did not understand the rules and regulations? Because I left the the... the I left everything signed by the captain, but she never went and picked it up. She okay. never went and That's not enough. This is a, this is in the eyes of, in my eyes as executive director, this is a very serious situation. This is a repeated violation. So we're going to go back to July 27th. Um, so had you ever applied for a DJ license before that? Yes. And did you receive one before that? Yes, we, we get uh, temporary ones every month. Okay, so you understand what requ what's required to receive a temporary license? Yes. What, what's, re what's required? I, I go to the, to, the, to the police station, the captain signs it, I bring it to um, Boston, and but in Boston I pay a fee of 250 and then they send it to me. Okay, do you understand by having the captain sign off on it, he is, he is aware of what you're having at your license premise that night? Yes. And do you understand the purpose of that? Yes. What is that purpose? Of having, it's a state that did, the music not too loud and. So it it's also through. so the police captain knows what's going on in his district. Yes, and also the captain, yes, true. Do you understand what's ha what happens at my office when you submit that application? Yes, you guys go over it and see, and then. Yeah, we review it. Yes. And then if we see that it's appropriate, we approve it throughout the entire city of Boston. So that is why we asked for two weeks notice. Yes. Okay. So you understand why that there is a two week deadline for these things? Mm, yes, I do. Because it's on the application itself too. It does. Okay, it's so 
you you dropped these off at the cat you dropped these off at the captain and you thought your staff like picked them up or something no 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 i misspoke you just got in the same english is my second language so i misspoke and it does not work okay. i left it at the captain captain was uh, he he signed it. he was gonna sign it and, and all i told her was pick it up and bring it to the boston to boston and boston will give you the the permit so and this person didn't pick it up she she didn't get a permit yes. for the city and still had a yes. dj Okay. Yes. Yes. And I have the one that it was signed, but it was she would never put it on. On she never sent it to to Boston, so she didn't know. I understand. I completely understand. It just I got I have kids on my own. I have three kids on my own, so I got to try to have my own life too. But I understand now. I understand that if I got out, if I'm gonna leave, I gotta have somebody here. But if you don't have but, an appropriate person in charge, I suggest you yes. don't open. So just don't go, don't go nowhere. I understand. I completely understand. But within the noise, I have made every single and the and the, the the sergeant who's there or the officer who's there, he knows. I have my DJs. That's why I can't believe that somebody is saying that there's noise in the background. There's, I mean, I wish somebody can come in and I'm a videotape it because and I'm gonna send you guys a video. I have the 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 a program that thing that it gives you. The noise balance. The noise will not. If you come to my place and you see my my speakers, my speakers don't go that loud. My speakers go inside. They're all hidden inside. Number one. Number two, I have I have I always have the doors closed. Number three, they, they don't go. The most that they will go is through the sidewalk. If you can hear them, you can hear them on the sidewalk, not outside. So this. There is no part, and I'm, I'm in, in my back in my backyard. There's nobody. I have a family dollar, and to get to the to the to let's say to the back neighbors, you're talking about a hundred yards to get to the back neighbors. So what have so you done? I don't inside understand how it's done. For um, soundproofing, have you considered? Oh. Have you considered investing yes, I, in I soundproofing? Yes, I did. I did, and I spoke to Miss Miss um, Miss uh, Miss Wu. I don't know if she, she's in, and I asked her, I'm trying to get these windows that they, these are big windows that they are soundproof. My only problem is the soundproof, they only come dark, and I don't have a permit of, of not having the police look inside. So it, it's, it, I, need, I need somebody to help me a little bit because I try to put uh, the soundproof, but they said, no, we don't allow those because we, we can't see inside. And they don't come uh, clear. They only come um, privacy glass. Nay, only, nay. They, there, yes. There's also other kinds of soundproofing, not just window ones. There's for the walls that you can would, install. Would so you, be able to, you should look into those. We have soundproofing throughout the city of Boston and not every soundproof window is tinted. But it this there's not it against the walls. You gotta understand the walls. They shouldn't be nothing because you gotta remember next to my my next to my place is it's a it's a it's a family dollar. They're not there until eight o'clock. They're done. And on the other side of the door, I have uh, Bohemios. They're there until I'm there. The back of my place, there's nothing in the back. There's a patio, and then the the house is you gotta. And the noise doesn't go all the way back there. That's I can guarantee you a million percent. And the front, you got across the street, and across the street, there's nobody. The, the whole, the whole, the, the whole thing is being constructed. And then you have the other place, La Terraza. And then next to it, you have La Terraza. Then you have a, 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 mm -hmm. a hair salon. So I don't understand where where they're saying that it the noise is coming from me. I just I, I don't I don't get it. Okay. Let's move on to the next one, please. Thank you. Let's read the next uh, violation into the record. This is uh, an incident of July 30th, 2022. The uh, incident is disc jockey taking place without an entertainment license. Once again, um, who's present on behalf of the licensee? Mr. Pranius. Mr. Pranius. Who's present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I'll be reading this report. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the July 30th incident who wish to testify? I do. Thank you. Um, you've all been sworn, Detective Hernandez. Uh, if you could please proceed with this police report. Good afternoon again. I'll be reading this. This report was uh, authored by uh, Sergeant uh, Gallagher on 7-30-2022 at about 11:45 p.m. Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the licensed premise unit were in East Boston, dropping a notice of a hearing to Belarus, Columbia, 28 Bennington Street, when they observed the disc jockey to be working inside the premise. 
the male was standing inside an elevated platform in the rear of the premise operating the sound system. Detectives know that Belarus, current city of Boston entertainment license does not allow for DJ entertainment. Detectives spoke with the manager, Mary Quintana, who they had worked with before. Detectives stressed um, music can be played at reasonable levels, but there should be no one in the DJ booth. As a result of what, what was observed, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license permit inspection notice 043344 to the Lars Columbia for premise providing DJ music without being licensed. This American town signed for and accepted the notice. I don't know. Thank you. Mr. Prandes, would you like to address the July 30th incident? Yes, I would like. Uh, could I ask questions to the officer? Uh, you may. Uh, officer, did you guys take pictures that day of the of the DJ booth? Like you did the first time? Let me see. No, but it's the same setup. It hasn't changed. Every time we go in there, it's the same setup. And we, we have the same conversation with her about what's going on. And she keeps telling us that he's not a DJ. But when we come in there, he's behind the DJ booth on the computer. Exactly the same thing. Even if I didn't take pictures, I know what we saw. It's the exact same setup. I yeah, will but, check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure uh, I'll check. I'll check, but it doesn't really, pictures doesn't really, um, I'll check. Let me just see. The detective the first, is saying he remembers it to be the no, same. No, what happened was the first day that they came, that they took pictures, it was, because there was a setup of a DJ with the with the disc and all of that, yes, that day, yes, no problem. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't that, like I said, I apologize. It was that on this particular day, we had problems with the noise. That everybody says that there's too many noise, too much noise. So I, I, I told her, do not put a DJ. All you're gonna do is have somebody that controls the music that it's not too loud. And this is the same tickets that they, we're gonna be hearing all of them. It, it, it he wasn't a DJ. He was only controlling the music. So it won't go too loud because what happened was that's next to the bathroom. People will walk around and they put it up because it, it wasn't the it was and they'll put it up and then I'll be like and then we had the problem and the guy outside came in and said, "Look, the music's a little bit loud." He came, she she came and she put it down and then she noticed that somebody was putting it up and that's when I told her, "You gotta have somebody just so that they don't touch the things because it's in the back. It's all the way in the back." And I said, "All right." That's what I told her. That's why I asked them, did they take pictures? Because that day, there was only a computer playing. There's no DJ there. They, right there, there was only, and all these three tickets, and she told them one day, because they even made her cry and everything. She came and she told them, look, I'm not doing nothing wrong. All I have him there, so now we even have him sitting on a piece of table so that he's looking so nobody brings the music up until I get a permit, which I got last week. And we, do, you know, as the officer, do we have any issues from the day I've been here until now, we have not had no problems. Cops hasn't come, no fights, there's nothing. I understand I, I, I gotta be here. I completely take responsibility, but within this next tickets, all I was having is a guy standing there helping me not so that music won't go loud because I don't, look, I'm a neighbor too. I don't like to have problems with my neighbors. I don't want my neighbors to not like me. So I'm trying to do everything in my possible way. I had tried to do double doors, I'm trying to do everything that is in my possible way because this is how my kids eat. So I'm trying to make it right, but I don't want to have problems with the neighbors. So I apologize with the neighbors. I'm going to try to make it within this month. This is going to be, this is going to end because I'm going to make it double side doors. I'm going to make soundproof. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. Okay. So just to, just to clarify, anyone who's controlling the sound is considered a DJ. He wasn't controlling the sound. He just making sure that nobody goes. And sometimes there's there's a there's a there's a song that goes loud. There's a song that goes lower. I I understand what you're saying, but he's not a DJ. Has to have his his disc, his everything. He doesn't have that. He I'm 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 a hundred percent sure. So who who determines what song goes on next? It, it's a YouTube, and I and I pay YouTube. I can show you. I have it the bill. It just plays a YouTube. It plays songs on and after and after and after and after. Okay, so in a situation like that, what is your staff like that night? Is there somebody there to control the sound? If, if no, I, have, I, I, pay, I pay one person just to do that. Okay. But sometimes, oh, I don't know, it happened after that they would say, oh, he's a DJ. He's not a DJ. All he was doing was controlling that it doesn't go too loud and he will get out the, the booth. A DJ has to sit in the booth, have a microphone, talk, everything. 
did, can you ask the officer, did he have a microphone? Did he have, he did, all he, there was, there was a computer. That's why I asked him, did you take the pictures? Because the first time they took pictures, because they saw it. Yes, it's a complete DJ. This one wasn't a complete DJ. This is only a computer, which I have, because I could show you. I even brought it today to show you that I have a computer. That's all I have it for. And I brought it home just for that, just to show you that I have it because I don't, I don't, I don't trust them no more. So I bring it. Okay. And so did you get a chance to talk to your manager, Mary? I did. Between yes. these two violations? I, I did. I did spoke to her. Yes. So number one, she said, yes, I didn't. I thought it was just, it, it was a mistake on number one, but the rest of those, the rest of the violations, she says, as I told them, because every time they walk in, she would tell them, he's not a DJ. He just, Controlling the music, helping us control the music. If it goes too loud, if it goes too down, and then he sits back on his seat. How does he know if it goes too loud? Does he have a sound monitor? We have a sound monitor. Yes, we okay. have a sound monitor, which is called, because I wanted to have everything for you guys today. Because it's called the Zebo X, and we pay for it. We pay for it just to make sure it's a, the, one of the best things that they have. The Zebo X. Detective Hernandez, are you familiar with that? His sound monitor? Uh, yes, we use that. We, okay. we use one of those apps also, but we also have an actual sound monitor. Okay. But I just want to state the same the same DJ that was there the first time and the same DJ that was there the second time. So the same person that was there the other so Nothing before. really changed. So you, yeah, we had a, right. yeah, so the same DJ yeah, that you just said was there. It was the same yes. guy. And we have no, yes, we have no, yes, I didn't have any pictures for that. I don't have any pictures for that. Do you, evening. Do you um, keep your um, back door closed when you have? We do. We we could. It's just that whenever we have apples, juices, and whatever we have to bring is from the basement back. What I'm doing now is I'm having my guys try to bring everything at night, like before the night, so that door stays closed. You you gotta understand this is my emergency door, so I can I have it closed, like have well, locked. Well, it can't be I, locked, but it has to be closed. Locked, but it's, it's closed. It's closed. Yes, it's closed, Miss. I'm trying to make double doors so I don't have the back door problems. Trust me, I'm trying to work with you guys as much as I can. Um, Nene, you said that you were out of the country. When were you out of the country? Uh, July 27th to so, um, September uh, 2nd. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I think. And how long have you been a manager here? Uh, I was before with um, uh, years ago. I, I was I was started uh, for like two years, and then now I've been here from April, I think. Okay. Last April. Okay, I think it's imperative upon you to install to install soundproofing. I will, I will do that and I'll send you receipts and everything. I will make sure I do that within ASAP. I will do that. Okay. Um, so on your license, we have a Rigoberto. Where's Rigoberto? He's here. Yeah, so when you're out of the country and he's the owner and manager on record, how come he's not managing the premise? He he, he does go, but he's not there uh, all the time, so he's, He's most he's he's most in um because he's also the cook for the uh, Bohemios, so he's there on both. You he's said he's at Bo Bohemios. Bohemios. Yeah, yeah, I could, he cooks there too. Okay, he he's the manager of record on your license. Yes. Okay, so last um, last August, Katerina Katerina Chang. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Who's that? Katerina Chang is the one that does the paperwork for me. Okay, so she contacted us to amend your entertainment license to add a DJ. This was August of 2021. So Rebecca told Katerina she had the wrong paperwork and she needed to fill out an application for live. And then we never heard from her again. What happened, I spoke to, um, so uh, a and we did that, but then we we needed to talk to um Natalia. Natalia is one of the um uh, city... yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to Natalia, and Natalia informed me that we would do it. So that's when we started doing the um changes, and 
I, I kept doing the, the permits like that. So I said, let me just do it. But now I try to contact uh, Natalia and Natalia's out of the office until September 27th. As soon as she comes back, I'm going to, like, I was I spoke to um, Ms. Wu today. I told her I'm going to have the application fill out, and then I'm going to go with Natalia and see what uh, what the next steps, put it on the news and do everything so that we can get that, that okay. license. Okay, so I just want to, um, so you're located in a neighborhood. You have families and neighbors that live around you that have called our office and have called the police to say that they are disturbed and um, bothered by the music coming out of your um, bar. So that's a fact. I really urge you to build and develop a relationship with these neighbors so that we can get to a place where they're comfortable with the sound coming out of your licensed premise and you're comfortable with how to monitor that inside. I promise I will do it. Sometimes that means in other neighborhoods um, giving the neighbors the 20, a 24 hour contact number should the music be really loud on a night that you're out of the country or that they need yes. to be able to call you right away and say the bass is too loud, please turn it down. You have to understand that you need to find a way to coexist and to run your business within the rules and regulations of the board. Yes. Would, would because, I be the neighbors are, because the neighbors are upset doesn't mean you don't work with them. It means you have to try really hard to get to a place that you can um, coexist together. Yes. So ONS can help you facilitate those meetings. Yes. But until that is done, until the soundproofing is done, I don't believe that you're in a place to have DJ or loud music. So you need to really work hard on that and work to get that done quickly. I will. Um, so this is something we do in all neighborhoods. There's many neighborhoods where there's residential and mixed use um, buildings co co coexist and they have music at night, but people need to sleep and they need to be able to live um, uninterrupted from loud music at night. So you're gonna have to find a way to make sure whoever is on premise when you're not is responsible for the same things that you're responsible for. I will. Uh, Rebecca is more familiar with the entertainment requirements. I'm going to ask her to um, ask you any questions that I haven't been able to cover so that we have all the information before um, we issue a final report. Um, I think we've covered everything. I just wanted to know, like, I know you've applied for a lot of one-timers, Nene, but like applying for a one-timer for every single day is kind of circumventing the annual process. So you okay. need to go through the annual process. A one-timer is meant to be temporary once in a while, you know, for pop-up events here and there, you can't apply for every single day okay. because then what is the purpose of our annual if yeah. you get granted those? So I just did it this month because I didn't want to have no more problems with no more, definitely no more tickets over, over DJs or over loud music because it's been, as you saw the last week, we haven't had no problem. And then when I call Miss Natalia, she's out until uh, September 27. So I was just trying to make it everything right. That's why. Okay. Yeah. We, we might have to hit pause on that until we can get everything lined up. Um, it's a strain on resources in my office. It's a strain on resources in the district. It's a strain on your neighbors. And I take your word for it that you're trying to operate this within the rules and regulations. And I know you're trying to make you know a living. We can help you, but you need to follow what we, we've been talking to you about this since last July and you have not followed through. Yeah, I understand. So is there a way that I can just get like this last two weeks because we have an event coming? I'm sorry. No. Well, I'll think about it, but I don't. I have an that. event coming on, on and because it was approved, it's just that they could only and they approved it for the for this last month. And I promise I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm that I'm going to trust me. I don't want problems with the neighbors. Everybody knows me. I have I also have a body shop and everybody in the in the neighborhood knows me. So, and I want to give my phone number out so that they can call me, they have an issue. But if, if you can see for the last two weeks that I've been here, there has not been one issue with nobody. Nobody. I'm here. Well, I'm there was make an issue right. last night. Ms. Krantz called our office first thing this morning. I don't, I don't understand. Last night, so, and that's another thing. You got to understand this, because this, this was going to be my second step. There was, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there was four businesses right next to each other. So I'm yes, sorry, sometimes. but I've walked in front of your building. I know what I'm talking about. 
it is coming from your place. It is coming from your place. And it woke me up and my family last night, last night at 1 a.m. called 911 at 1.10 asking for help. They never made it. They never made it there last night because you did not turn it down until 2 a.m. That left me with three hours of sleep. And I can so verify sorry. we received an email at 1 a.m. from Ms. Prince. Like in, I, we'll I, review whatever I do have. not write those in the middle of the night for nothing. I do not wake up to complain yeah. for nothing. Last week, it started at 10.30 p.m. and didn't stop until 2. Thank you. Um, Xavier, Dr. Joyce, is there anything further on the July 30th incident, or would you like to move on to the final violation? We'll move on, but I just want to make it clear, whatever you've applied for, Nene, we haven't issued yet, so we'll have to review it in light of everything. So um, we'll take everything into consideration. You may have had permission from the police no, captain for these future I, events, I, I but understand. we have to figure it out, okay? I understand. Um, go ahead, Danny. Thank you. Um, we have one final incident uh, that is the subject of this afternoon's hearing. There is uh, an initial report and a supplemental report. Date of the incident is August 20th, 2022. Premise providing DJ music without a license and a DJ present at premise. Uh, Mr. Brani, as I assume you are present on behalf of the licensee, once again. I am, I am, sir. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Officer Sullivan Venezia. Detective Eduardo Espino. Sergeant Michael Holden. Thank you. And are there any additional individuals with firsthand knowledge of the August 20th incident who wish to testify? I do. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Who will be reading the initial report into the record? Uh, Officer Sullivan Venetia. Great. Thank you. You may proceed. About 12.13 m on saturday 8 20 22 officer sullivan venezia and the, the gold 411 alpha responded to a radio call for a disturbance at 28 bennington street east boston assisting was officer netio and nepo messino mateo and the gold 201 alpha prior to arrival officers were informed by dispatch via radio that the dj at said address was playing music too loud upon arrival officer hired scared talking to a patron with the front door open Officers requested the door to remain closed, only open for people to come in and out. Officers were then met by a female suspect later identified as Marie Quintana, who officers know from prior incidents as the part-time officer. Officers requested to have the music be turned down. The suspect was obliged. Officers then requested to speak to the caller. Officers were informed by dispatch that the caller wanted to remain unknown. That's it for that. Thank you. And there is a supplemental as well from this incident. There is. I'll be reading from that. Great. Thank you. I'll be reading supplemental report from the same I number authored by a uh, certain detective manual of Blas. On Monday, 8 22, 2022, at 10 p.m., Sergeant Detective Blas and the Gold 983 and Detective Espino on the Gold 816 completed a licensed premise inspection, the Code 35 at Billiardis, Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. The person in charge at the time of the inspection was Alejandro Pulas. License premise inspection notice 042508 was signed for and accepted by the person in charge. The violation noted was premise providing DJ entertainment without being licensed. It should be noted that Officer Sullivan Venencia informed Charge Detective Blas that at the time of the, his response on 820-2022 at 12.43 a.m., he noted that there was a DJ present on, at the premise. As investigators were leaving the premise, they were also interacted with Mary Quintana and informed her with respect to the affirmation violation. Sergeant Detective advised Quintana to provide, any, provide the license board with any surveillance video from the property that would either confirm or refute the allegations that a DJ was in use at the premise at 8-20-2022. Both Quintana and Bulas were cooperative and investigate with the investigators during the response to this incident. And that is the MR report. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Brunius, would you like to address the August 20th incident? Can I ask a question to the officer, uh, civilian? Civilian, I forgot yes, his sir. name. Yes, sir. 
Yes, officer. Has it been, been many times that there's been calls? That's only one question. That there's been calls to Villares, Colombia, and that you guys get there and has not been no loud music, everybody out of the office, out of the premises. Has it been a couple of times that somebody makes a call, false call? So we, we, we do get calls on a nightly basis still. Yeah, I can confirm that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. That's all I had. That's all, that was all my question. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Brown, is there anything else you wanted to add about August 20th? That's all. That's, it, it, that's all. That's all I wanted to address. There's many times that people call fake calls and we get them a lot. And it just, but from the license, as I said, I, I, I already approached it. I said, he's not a DJ. He was just standing there. But they call it DJ, so I know I, I don't have him there no more. He's not standing there no more or sitting there. Thank you. And uh, Ms. All. Prince, I, I know you wanted to testify on this incident as well. Was there anything you wanted to add before we move to Executive Director? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Executive Director Joyce. Nene, did you apply for um, a license for that night? No, I did not miss. Okay. I was out of the country. No, I did not. All right. I have no other questions. Uh, Director, Director Fu, do you have any further questions or statements? I have no further questions. Anything further either from the licensee or the executive director before we adjourn? No. no. Okay. Thank you. These are uh, all of the matters before the uh, division this afternoon. The executive director will take this matter under advisement and will issue a written decision that adjourns today's hearing. Thank you, everybody.